a wide rollout of vaccinations to boosters, housing affordability issues, construction. The City of Toronto went through some major changes this year. Mayor John Tory, he's been joining us weekly and he joins us live right now for a look at the year. And we also want to look ahead. Good morning to you, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Mel. I feel like we've been doing your year-ender every week, so we've been touching on all of these issues. Uh, but let's just rehash. Let's take a look back. Before we go to the year, let's look at yesterday. Uh, massive announcements coming down from the province. Uh, the City of Toronto, we mentioned about uh, stepping up when it comes to boosters. What is your message for Torontonians when it comes to booster shots and just where we sit as a city in this COVID world? Well, uh, in the COVID world, we sit in a position that is actually fortunate compared to many because we have, uh, you know, upwards of 90 percent of our people vaccinated twice. Uh, and that's something that's, uh, you know, at the top ranks of cities like ours in the world. Uh, but now uh, the medical experts have told us that a booster is something that is going to be necessary to provide a good protection. Uh, the province has made some changes just yesterday in the criteria as to how and when and who can get the booster. And we're going to have to react to that, which we're doing by substantially increasing capacity of our clinics and the clinics operated by our healthcare partners and things like pharmacies and doctor's offices to get people vaccinated. So my message is, please get the booster shot. For those who haven't had the first and second dose, please do that. We're continuing with our efforts. For kids 5 to 11, we're at a remarkable 37% of those kids vaccinated after only three weeks, but we need to get the rest of the way there on that. So please get vaccinated, every member of the family. Uh, please get a booster shot. And then the other part of that message that goes together with it is, please socialize sensibly. Please, uh, you know, things are better this year. If you think back to last year, we were told then you couldn't really have Christmas and the holiday, you know, uh, socializing with anybody uh, outside of your own home. Well, it's better this year, but we're saying don't go all the way from sort of dinner for two, uh, Christmas dinner to a full-blown family reunion. It is not the time to do that. Please exercise restraint and use common sense uh, with regard to how you socialize too. Uh, you know, crowd scenes are to be avoided. And so that way we can get through this latest wave of the Omicron variant and, uh, you know, get back onto the path we were on of getting you know more towards a normal life and so that's the message that i have at this stage which i know sounds familiar to people but we are making progress and i have hope yes. that we can get out of this we've proven we can do that but we've still got to you know we've got to keep at this thank you for pointing that out you know when we look back to where we were a year ago when we look back to march 2020 that just a lot has changed with the vaccinations that has been a major uh, a major game changer that we've seen with hospitalizations and whatnot um with that the the covid pandemic has brought about a number of issues um and that's an understatement um, one of them being, you know, affordability for uh, Torontonians and across the GTA, uh, for Canadians, really. Housing has been an issue. Uh, we've seen uh, the cost of everything going up. I want to focus a little bit on housing. We know the Premier going to have this uh, housing summit today. What is the message here for Torontonians when it comes to being able to pay the rent, being able to find the availability? Um, because a lot of people still can't make ends meet right now. Well, the message is, first of all, unfortunately, that uh, housing summit the premier had called, and quite rightfully so, had to be uh, postponed. I say rightful to call it and rightful to postpone it because of the pandemic and all the urgent issues that we're having to deal with. But having said that, our efforts as a city have uh, have never uh, been more intense in this area. We are now building, uh, have had approved, and have people moving into uh, more supportive and, and affordable housing units than ever before. And by affordable, uh, what we're saying is that we're using public land, for example, uh, using some money supplied by the, principally the federal government uh, and other means, deferred taxes and so on on that land, to make sure that we can uh, build and then offer to people apartments that are below the market rent. So that somebody uh, who's in the workforce, who has a reasonable job but has a modest income in a very expensive city, will have a place to live. And so we're just going to keep at that because we need to build more and more and more of that. We have brought in something called inclusionary zoning, which says to developers that as they develop the city, uh, in every development, all these condo buildings and so on that are being built, there has to be a component of affordable housing for people because that is simply what we have to do to make sure both that people can afford to live here and that we don't end up having a city that consists entirely of people who uh, are very well off or those who are really struggling. We need people in the middle, as it were. So we're going to be uh, absolutely relentless in our efforts in 2020. 22, as we have been in 2021, and we're uh, establishing benchmarks in terms of what we're achieving by way of thousands of affordable housing units that have never been achieved before. And, and I'm proud of that, but we're going to continue on with that and intensify our efforts because that is going to be the key to a successful city. Affordable housing, supportive housing for people with mental health and other kinds of substance use issues, and we're doing a lot on that front too, especially helped by a program called Rapid Housing from the federal government. So uh, we're going to uh, carry on with those efforts because it's essential to keeping the city healthy. 
Mayor Tory, thank you so much for bringing up, you know, so, so many people who are struggling. And unfortunately, we saw some scenes um, that got, um, you know, a little sketchy, to, to be honest, with clearing of encampments um, f throughout this year. Um, do you stand by some of the decisions made uh, on behalf of the city and with the involvement of Toronto Police in how all of these situations were handled? Well, I don't bring the police in or by a lot of people. They make their own decisions and exercise their own discretion. Politicians don't direct the police. But I will say this. When it comes to the fundamental way in which we dealt with the encampments, where we first spent weeks and weeks and weeks, 20,000 visits to people who were experiencing homelessness in public parks to, to convince them and to offer them uh, safer indoor housing, um, we did that first. But then when we found a situation where, for example, would be a huge numbers of empty tents that would be in public parks and that the advocates principally uh, would not let uh, those tents be taken down so that we could reduce the footprint of these encampments, uh, then other action had to be taken. And I will say this to you. Encampments in public parks uh, deny everybody the use of public parks, which is what they're meant for, first of all. But secondly, and, and related directly to the people experiencing homelessness, they are unsafe. They're unhealthy and they're illegal. And we simply can't have a situation where we just say, well, we're just going to leave them there and let them grow and pro proliferate. We have a challenge that I talked about earlier on in regard to affordable and supportive housing, a challenge that we're beginning to meet in a way like it's never been done before. But uh, in the meantime, the solution cannot be uh, that people can set up encampments and have them grow in public parks. And when the police got involved in uh, confrontations with uh, people in those uh, parks, uh, it was only when there was the presence of large numbers of protesters who, I will tell you, told people right there and then that they came to the park to provoke a confrontation. And so, um, you know, I will just say that, yes, I stand by the approach we took, which was to first focus on a compassionate way to get people safe indoor housing. But also I stand by the approach we took to say at a certain point in time, you just can't say that these encampments are going to remain there indefinitely, unsafe, illegal and uh, and um, unhealthy as they are. And, and, and contrary to what is meant by a public park, which is everybody can use it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Tory, I want to switch gears to transit. Uh, the TTC celebrated 100 years. That's significant. A lot, or some would argue, not a lot has changed uh, within some of these years that, that should have been expedited even more. But now we're looking toward the Ontario line. Uh, there are concerns about construction. How do you ease some of those fears for those in the downtown core um, as we look ahead? It's hard to look years ahead to what the final product will be. Uh, so what do you say to those who are, you know, upset by what's going to be happening in the interim? Well, the, the first thing I say is take a look at that map that's on the screen right now, which is you are going to have a new subway, some of it above ground, a lot of it below ground, that's going to run all the way from Don Mills and Eglinton, where the science center is, all the way down to Ontario Place, right through the city. It'll provide an alternative to the Young Street subway line, which in normal times was getting very crowded. And so the good news is we're building transit. And, and with our partners, the federal and provincial governments, we are building $30 billion for the transit, and it's actually getting built. The bad news is anytime you build transit, there's going to be disruption. So the message that I would say to people is we're going to try our hardest to minimize that disruption, but I'm not going to try and overly sugarcoat this because in the end, when we're building a huge transit project like this, there are going to be intersections downtown that are going to be inter interrupted or interfered with for years, uh, but that's going to result in another new subway. And, you know, people will feel a bit better when on Eglinton this coming year, 2022, we open a brand new subway that runs right across the city from one side to the other uh, and provides new transit to largely underground for people to get around. And I think these are what we have to do, these kinds of projects uh, in a city where for decades we just didn't build transit uh, and we sort of let congestion get worse and worse. We let people not have real access to opportunity because they were sort of isolated in their neighborhoods. And we're bringing that to an end. And we're doing it in partnership, all three governments together. And people should be happy about that even when they get frustrated with the construction and the disruption that causes because this is a good thing for a modern city to have transit. It's good for the environment, good for the economy, good for families, and good for uh, opportunity. Uh, Mayor Tory, I want to take this opportunity to thank you because this will be the first time that we, uh, last time we'll get a chance to talk in 2021. Uh, we will join you again in 2022 and, and hopefully things will change come a year from now and where we are at least with this pandemic. Uh, but a lot of people want to know, you have a lot to consider and mull over in the year to come. Will you be running for mayor again? 
I, I don't know the answer to that. I have been very focused on the pandemic and on the budget, needless to say. I mean, these take up all of my time. And what I have to do maybe over the holidays is to have a discussion with myself, uh, but also one with my family, of course, and, uh, you know, try and take into account all the different factors you take into account in making that decision. It's a very personal decision. Uh, I enjoy this job. I think it is a huge privilege to have it. Um, and uh, so, you know, I will be thinking about that over the holiday uh, season. And then uh, when we come back in the new year, obviously, you have to make that decision and, and tell people what you're doing. So, uh, you know, I have lots of stuff that I'd love to do. I love the city and I love this job. Um, but, you know, it, it isn't the case that, uh, you know, people are necessarily right to be in a job forever. And so those are the kinds of things you have to think about as well, not be selfish about this, but rather be uh, take into account what you think is going to be best for the city in terms of continuing to move it forward. You know, things that stimulate me to want to stay around and when I hear motions being moved about bringing in new taxes and, you know, all this kind of thing, which I just don't think people can have right now. I think they're, you know, they're a whole lot of uh, trying to pay their bills, including their bills to the cities and all the other governments. And, you know, those kinds of things kind of stimulate me. But we'll see. Uh, we'll have that discussion and we'll make what we believe to be the best decision for the city, but also uh, for my own family, uh, which, you, you know, you have to take that into account. I'm a human being and I have a, I'm a father and a grandfather and a uh, husband and all those things have to be uh, thought about in making these uh, big personal decisions. OK, I'm going to file that under a maybe. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. Happy holidays. Before you go, uh, uh, we've got a lot of Same people to that want to say. Too. Yes. Yeah, may I say to the viewers, uh, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year. And please, please, I, mean, I don't mean to combine, you know, happy greetings, but please get vaccinated. Please make sure people in your lives get vaccinated. And please socialize sensibly. You know, please just think about who you socialize with, how you socialize, where you socialize. It's very important that we can put this nightmare behind us and in 2022 get on with really getting, you know, back on the cycle of normal life. And But a lot of it's in our own hands. And so uh, I will try to help inform people and I'll be back. I'll be back next week. You'll be uh, uh, unfortunate to, to, to hear uh, that uh, getting my booster shot on Tuesday. So maybe we'll uh, make an occasion out of that that we can all talk okay. about together. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, talking about socialization, and, uh, or socializing. <laughs> Let's talk to Dina, hey. Sid, and Devo because they want to say a little something to you as well. Happy New Year to you as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks Mayor a lot. Tory, socializing sensibly with us. That's, that's well, how that's we it. do. Did yeah. I hear of Mayor Tory's mayor again? No new taxes. <laughs> oh, no, no, new taxes. Taxes. No, no new taxes. No new taxes. No new. Oh, you keep chanting that, and I'm with you because, look, we've got the old taxes that are already there, and we need to pay the bills. I don't try to fool people. We need to pay for <laughs> the transit and for the shelters for people and all that. But the notion of piling new taxes on, uh, you know, to me is just not it's, not, it's not the right time if ever if there ever is a right time for that. It's certainly not now. Uh, Mayor Tory, we're... Uh, hey, we, Except we, maybe you, Sid. Oh, well, I'll, I'll take that. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's well, leads it's, that's what a segue. This Sarah, leads us in. 6-0 surtax. Yeah, oh, I like that. One well, person surtax. I would never run with you as the incumbent, Mayor Tory. You know that. <laughs> um, I couldn't take that half a percent of the vote away from you. You know what? In all seriousness, you're, you're a phenomenal mayor. You come on every week. We have some laughs. We have a good time. You talk about the real issues with Mel, and you're, and you're so kind with us. Considering this is your last breakfast television appearance of the year, we have put together a little something highlighting the best oh, no. and the worst <laughs> and the worst of That's your right. appearances. Take a look. That's right. Okay. You combine Mayor Tory and time. It's Tory time. Roll the opening, please. Ah. Tis, did tis he that just, moment in the morning. I got ah. just grown. What happened to the drink you were holding <laughs> once the camera I, I stopped rolling? Truth. I brought it back to my desk. I continued to work. I, I, I continued to do my job. Uh, and I had it on my desk and I drank it. So it said, oh I think you better God. get that water. You've got a coffee oh, cup there. Get the water in because oh, clearly you're showing signs of dehydration, especially that skin elasticity. Mayor Tory was ready for the roast. I'll tell you, that, look, he's killing he himself warm. over here. How about you, like, Thank like you. you have on the low energy scale here when it comes to supporting our beloved Maple Leafs? What is a the matter? Lack there you know what I'm saying? I, I, get in the I, game, buddy. I do not get feel game. comfortable. Well, no, but because I want to discuss with Sid where these tattoos are located. Oh. That's what I want to get into with him. He has an adorable little great kazoo right under his wazoo. That's not true. That's not true. No, that's nothing. That's way, that's way too, if that was true, that's way too personal to <laughs> share. Hello, anyway. dum -dums. Where can one uh, throw their name in the hat for a street? Out of curiosity. Sid Sixero Sewage Treatment Plan. Wow. Oh, that's pretty Don't fun. laugh. I would take it. I can't see what I'm doing here. I just, oh, I just wanted to get a Sid, lock for I a wanted lock. to get, get a lock of my hair. I'm going to bid a loony for yours. <laughs> no oh, I know you can't Victoria, see it. I'm going to help you out. Help you out. Pull it all the way down. Yeah. Push your hair, pull your hair back. Pull all your hair back. Pull all your hair back. Yeah. This is going well. It looks great. It looks great. If you're just <laughs> turning in, it's okay. It's going to be okay. And, look, no. and now slide it up. Look at this. this. Yeah. There we go. Now, a little bit. There we go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. That's awesome.
Good times, Lori Taylor. Yeah, man, Tori. So good. Always ready. Always so quick. Hey, 660, do you need some aloe vera? Because you just got burned. I should have known better. I should have known better. But anyway, yeah, I'll have to review that for next year. We have to go. Before we do, you and Devo might be teaming up for another hair band Johnny Foe moment. Is this true? New Year's Eve, Mayor Tori, will I see you? I, it's entirely possible. I haven't. I don't know what I'm doing. In I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I think I know your plans more yeah, than you do I right you now, do. Mayor Tory. Uh, I, I will be do. hosting uh, whatever the city decides to do, whatever we can do safely, uh, virtually as well. And I heard something about you and I toasting at midnight. That's all I heard. Oh. So I'll bring the well, show. There we go. Okay. Well, if you heard that, then you probably know more than I do. I just do what I'm told. Yeah. Apparently, let's make it happen. it'll be more roasting than toasting if it's in Tory style. Of Cheers course. to you. Thanks Mayor for Tory, hosting. Well, only if Sid's going to be there. All right. He'll be happy. Sleeping. Happy New Year to you all. And Merry Christmas. And. Yeah, so, it. Socialize, socialize safely. Take care, Mayor. All the Mayor best Tor. in the new year. Bye. God bless. Thank you. Care. All of you. Uh, Mayor John Tory. Mayor Tory, thank you. All right. Uh, Look, I know everyone has different political views. Mm. That man cares, and he's out there every day, yep. and he's yep. a great mayor. I'm sorry. He's a great mayor, cares about the city. With a great sense of humor yes. to boot.